Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to have a look at this Pegasus KV-1 and KV-2 Soviet heavy tank set. This is a 172nd scale plastic kit, and as the box says, it includes two tanks. The back of the box has nothing at all, unless you count plain white as a thing. Which I guess it is a thing, but it's not an interesting thing. I've never built anything by Pegasus Hobbies before, and I saw this in the hobby shop for $15, which seemed like a pretty good price, so I figured, why not? It's good to try new things. There sure is a lot of stuff crammed into this box. It's nice to see that you could build two of either of the KV variant. I had kind of expected it to be a case of building a KV-1 and a KV-2. As you can see from all of these parts, it's possible to build two KV-2s or two KV-1s, or one of each. The choice is yours. The parts are moulded in a green plastic which is a bit greasy to the touch. This is most likely just mould release agent that can easily be washed off with some warm soapy water. The detail on this kit seems reasonable. It's not the best I've ever seen, but it's definitely not the worst. There are a lot of road wheels, but other than those, there aren't really a great many parts that will need to be attached. It looks to me like it should be a fairly simple build. As always, there are mould lines to deal with, but they're not especially bad and should be pretty easy to remove. There aren't any blemishes or moulding errors that I can see. In fact, the worst thing I can see is some flashing on the sprue rather than on the model's parts themselves. The instruction leaflet is simple. It kind of looks hand-drawn. Nothing wrong with that. I think it's a nice touch, actually. Though I do have a problem with the fact that none of the parts are labelled on the sprue or the instructions. This could very well cause some confusion, especially with the road wheels. Though, as always, if you are paying attention to what you are doing, you should be fine. I start at step one, strangely enough. This step is to build the track sets. I start by gluing the idler wheel into place, and then it's time for the inner road wheels, which have suspension arms moulded onto them. Here's the issue with the parts not being labelled on the instructions or the sprue. They might look very similar, but half of the road wheels are intended for the right side of the tank, while the rest are intended for the left. That makes sense, but determining which road wheel goes on which side could be a little bit tricky. As you can see, there's a guide hole in the bottom of the wheels. Side by side, you can tell these are obviously different parts. You just have to be sure that you're using the correct part for each side. Obviously, this means test fitting to make sure you're doing it right. When installing these road wheels, you want the suspension arms to be facing forwards towards the idler wheel like so. The guide pins will hold them in place, but it'll be a little bit loose. Not all of the wheels are in direct contact with the track, but they will be hidden up against the side of the hull and mostly not visible, so I don't worry about it too much. The suspension arms will be visible from the outside, and I do like the extra bit of detail and three-dimensionality that this adds, while still keeping the tracks as a single piece. It's a little bit unfortunate that there's a bit of flashing between the drive sprocket and the tracks, but that can be cleaned up easily enough later. Next, I add the drive sprocket. These are keyed and, like the road wheels, are intended to go on a specific side of the tank. The brackety looking thing should face upwards towards the return rollers. Easy enough to get into place, just be sure that you're using the correct part. It is then time to attach the track set to the lower hull. This was pretty fiddly to get into place. There's a lot of pins to line up with their corresponding holes and you can't really see what you're doing there, especially with a camera in the way. Eventually it does slot into place though and then I apply glue. The result is fairly decent. Obviously the next step would be to assemble and attach the track set for the left side of the tank. After that, I attach these towing shackle parts. I didn't manage to video it very well, but the way these go in is a bit unusual. There's a long rectangular pin that goes into the hull part and forms part of the hull. I found it was a little bit fiddly to get these parts in, but I did eventually get them installed. You can see the rectangular pins are quite high up in the hull and will probably need to be trimmed down before installing the upper hull. The instructions now say to build the turrets, but I'm going to be a rebel and finish the hull. I attach the rounded hull rear and transmission casing part here. The fit is okay. There's a bit of a gap along the bottom, but it looks fine otherwise. It is a Russian tank after all. Gaps and imperfections are expected. Next, I glue the hull top onto the lower hull. There's pins to guide this and it goes together quite neatly. There's a minor gap at the front, but that should be there, from what I've seen of KV hull fronts. Though I do apply pressure to minimise gaps anyway. Now to add more details. 
I attach these toolboxes or vodka storage boxes or whatever these boxes were for. These have different sized pins that will act as a guide to prevent you from installing them backwards. They go into place without issue and I think they look pretty decent. They're not all perfectly lined up nice and straight, but hey, Soviet tank. Next, I add this tube thing, which is probably a gun cleaning kit, if I had to guess. I follow that with this thing. I'm pretty sure it's a saw to allow the crew to cut themselves a traditional Soviet log. Then comes the headlamp. This attaches in the same way as the front shackles, which is to say it's a bit fiddly. It does go into place though, so I can't complain too much. The whole machine gun attaches in the same manner, and I just couldn't get it to sit properly against the whole front, which was rather annoying. I took care of this problem by clipping the guide pole off the gun, and then gluing it onto the hull without the benefit of a guide part. Much less hassle. The slot and round part that sits below the gun mounting were guidance enough. It's probably not perfect, but it looks just fine. There is an additional piece of optional armour for the KV-1. This part wouldn't fit over the headlight already installed on the hull. I could have trimmed the parts to allow it to fit, but I don't intend to use it, so I didn't. And that's it for the hull. Now it's turret time. I start with the KV-2 turret, because of reasons. This goes together simply enough. The gun mantlet slots into the front of the turret like so. The mantlet should sit with the hole for the vision device in the upper left corner. From the crew's perspective, that is. That is, on the right looking at it from the front. Right? The rear hatch and machine gun housing slot into the rear of the turret like so. I add glue and then sandwich the mantlet and hatch between the upper and lower halves of the turret. The fit is pretty poor. I apply pressure, quite a lot of it actually, to try and minimise the gaps, but it's not enough. I'm usually pretty forgiving with my criticism, especially if the model is a gaming piece where some simplification can be expected. But this just looks bad. I'm sure it can be fixed with some putty, but it's more work than I want to put into it. I'll admit I felt a little bit demotivated by this, but I continued anyway and installed the hatch. No issues with this. It goes in easily and looks very hatchy. Then the gun. There's a couple of indentations around the barrel for whatever reason, but other than that, it looks okay. I'm really not happy with how this turret looks. Sure, it was easy to put together and you can identify that it is indeed a KV-2 turret, but the gaps are really bad. I think this is probably a reflection of the low price of this model. To be honest, I didn't really think the KV-1 turret was going to be any better, but I went and built it anyway. I start by clipping the gun mantlet onto the front of the turret body. This actually fits quite nicely. It's a tight fit, but not so tight that a little bit of pressure couldn't take care of it. I then add glue in behind the parts to secure it. I then glue the bottom of the turret into place. There are pins and holes to guide this and it goes together almost perfectly. There is a bit of a gap on the right side, but it's not that bad at all. This is a stark contrast to the KV-2 turret. The hatch then goes into place. Like the KV-2 turret, this goes in with no issue, as does the main gun. There's no muzzle brake, so no need to worry about its orientation beyond it being straight relative to the rest of the turret. And to finish this turret, the machine gun. I did have to enlarge the slot for this part just a little bit, but after that it slipped into place nice and easily and I think it looks pretty good. You can, if you want, add extra armour to the sides of the KV-1 turret. You would also add the extra armour to the front of the hull to go with this. The part looks like it would probably fit quite nicely, but I didn't really want to build the up-armoured version, though I do like the extra interest the bolt details add to the side of the turret. I feel like in this kit the original turret version looks better. So that's it, the Pegasus KV-1 and 2 kit complete, sort of. Initially, I was going to build both tanks this kit can make, but at the time of filming this I just didn't have the motivation. I was planning to have one built as the KV-1 and the other a KV-2, but the KV-2 turret is so bad I just don't want to do that anymore. Instead, I'm actually thinking that I might just put all of the unused parts in my bits box and use them later, probably in another post-apocalyptic vehicle build. Maybe I can use the track set for something a bit more interesting. I think this kit is okay, sort of. The hull and KV-1 turret aren't too bad at all, though some aspects of the hull assembly were a little bit annoying. The KV-2 turret is just bad. I guess maybe it was an afterthought or something when they were designing this, because it just doesn't look like they've put much thought into it at all. Who knows? 
The result is that I now have a model of a KV-1 and way more bits left over than I was expecting. This is not a super detailed display model, though the packaging might suggest that's what they were going for. I would say, based on the level of detail and the simplified construction, that this kit is gaming miniatures. Not that there's anything wrong with that at all. I love gaming miniatures. It just changes the lens through which this model should be looked at. If you are after a quick, mostly easy to build and relatively low cost KV-1 or KV-2 for games you play using this scale, which I believe is 20mm, these wouldn't be a bad choice. Though I would probably look elsewhere if I was specifically after a KV-2. Unless you really want to put the work into making the Pegasus one look presentable. In the end I'm not disappointed that I bought this kit. It was only $15 after all. But I will be hesitant to buy another Pegasus tank kit in the future. The guy in the hobby shop where I bought this said that they weren't usually that cheap and what they had on the shelves was the last of their stock, so I assume they're usually a little bit more expensive. Read into them not getting any more what you will. At the time I was tempted to go back and get the IS-2 and ISU boxes, but I'm kind of glad now that I didn't. In the end, at least the KV-1 isn't too bad at all. What do you think? Have you built this kit? Have you built any of the other kits that Pegasus offers? If so, I'd like to hear your experiences and opinions. Put them in the comments section below. And of course, if you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on social media, and watch me live stream on Twitch. And if you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at patreon.com slash That would be most fantastic. Links to all of those things are in the description below. I shall return soon. So until then, happy modelling and thanks for watching. Farewell.